So before we get into today's video about the International Space Station and what it caught on camera, I was sitting around, man, and I was like, you know what? I ain't really got that MTV Cribs look into the International Space Station or get any information on what all it actually does, right? I haven't come across a video like that yet. So I went searching and I got a few facts about it and a little bit of information and a little peek inside of it that I'm gonna rattle off real quick, all right? Real quick. It says, um, the International Space Station actually flies around the world every 90 minutes, traveling at five miles per second, right? In a space of 24 hours, the space station makes 16 orbits around the Earth, right? 16, traveling through 16 sunrises and sunsets. Also, it's 357 feet long from end to end. That's about the same as a football pitch. Football pitch? I don't know what they're talking about there, but <laughs> it says uh, there are two bathrooms on board. There's also one gym, six sleeping quarters, and a 360-degree bay window, right? It says uh, six spaceships can dock to the station at, at one given time, and it's had 230 individuals from 18 countries has visited. So I need to see more. I need to get in a little bit more information, but I just wanted to provide y'all, some of y'all that are like me that hadn't gotten that information about it. We've, we've watched a few videos, but never really saw what it does or knew everything that it does or how it looked in, on the inside. So, but this video here, man, is NASA detected something massive that docked close to the International Space Station in 2014. We're gonna check it out. So if you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, join the fam. Here we go. Back in 2014, various websites posted about an interesting object picked up by the International Space Station cameras. For those that are unaware, the International Space Station has a variety of cameras to monitor spacewalks and other areas that need to be under 24 hour surveillance. This has allowed the agency to play the live footage on internet shows, websites, live television broadcasting, and so on, to help build up an interest in space. Recently, there have been numerous events where footage of strange objects float in the distance, that's led many to believe it's extraterrestrial in origin. After such incidents are spotted, the footage will later be removed or edited, the live feed will be cut or the entire instance will be completely ignored by NASA. One instant happened back in 2014, and amateur researchers have said it's some of the best evidence they have of a UFO in space. The object could be seen on one of the live cams. Many people across the world were watching it on this particular occasion. However, something they couldn't explain was the strange object that quickly made itself known. The object appeared to be sleek and orange in color. I thought that's what it was. I didn't know for sure if that's what they were talking about. And it definitely does look like a, a ship, the way it's, you see it here? So the way it's outlined? Tell me that don't look like a ship carrying something right here. After only a few seconds, those watching the live feed said it docked onto the International Space Station. And shortly after it did this, the live cams were shut off. Why do they do that every time? Why? That's the second instance I've heard of. There are probably more. That's the second instance, though, of y'all doing that. With those watching the event saying that all they could now see was a blue or purple screen. Interestingly, many who watch the live cams have said this is a common occurrence to see an unidentified flying object in the background. Others have even said that NASA themselves sometimes zoom in on the objects in order to get a better look. But after determining that it's not part of any spacecraft, they'll quickly shut off the cameras. It's this type of behavior that's caused some to believe that there could be mysterious objects visiting our planet. The objects that could be seen at the International Space Station wasn't there very long before the live cam shut off. Since then, it hasn't been seen since but this was enough for people as they were able to take screenshots of the strange looking object. After this, various people started to put forward their ideas on what they thought the object could be. 
one individual suggested that what we're looking at was a genuine UFO, and that NASA were not quick enough to shut off the cameras on this occasion, leaving all those who tuned in to see it clearly. Another person said the following about the event. It's really interesting how incredible discoveries like these are not talked about. You have something that doesn't look like it originates from Earth, and yet no one seems to care. No one seems to question what this object is and why it's there. No one seems to question why the NASA cameras quickly shut off after it's picked up on. It's one of those things that boggles me. Incredible things like these are being captured and no one seems to care. Others, however, went down a different route and suggested that what people were seeing was not an unidentified flying object. But okay, if it's not, then why shut down the feed then? Why? And you gonna have a hard time convincing people that that's something else. Look at it. It docked. You can't say it's space debris if it docked there. To me, it looked like it docked. Rather a smudge on one of the live cams. And this is why NASA turned the camera off. They suggest that every day these pieces of space debris can be seen on the cameras and that they have nothing to do with UFOs. Really? Really? NASA themselves have even backed this theory <laughs> and said that these objects that are sometimes seen in the distance are not UFOs <laughs> and have nothing to do with aerial crafts. Hey man, I, 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 I could very well be wrong, you know what I mean? And I have no problem with being wrong, but y'all tell me, does that look like the normal space debris that we've seen? It, it could very well be. I'm just saying, if I was a gambling man, which I am, I would bet that it's not space debris. Others have said there's never been a UFO caught on a NASA camera before, and that what people are seeing is pareidolia. This is when your mind plays tricks on you, and tries to make you think that something is there when it's not. Others have said they've captured UFOs on the SOHO cameras, which stands for the Solar Heliospheric Observatory but NASA soon shut this down by saying the following. Ever since launch, there's been a number of people who've claimed to have seen flying saucers and other objects in SOHO images. Although some of the supposed pictures of UFOs can seem quite intriguing, they've always turned out to have quite an ordinary cause when examined by experienced SOHO scientists. In recent days, we've been receiving so many questions and claims that we'd like to set the record straight. We've never seen anything that even suggests there's UFOs out there. In the past, we've been accused of covering up UFO evidence when we present our explanations, and of refusing to comment or climbing up when we give up on someone who won't accept our explanations. While we don't expect to convince everybody, we hope this page and links can provide some information for the curious, who want to go away and investigate the claims on their own. Most commonly, UFO claims are due to perfectly natural flaws, or artifacts in our publicly available data. Some of the things that people are seeing are planets, cosmic rays, software glitches and debris. Another NASA official said the following about these claims. The majority of these alleged UFO sightings can be easily explained. One of the things that people see is space debris that's made its way in front of their cameras. When these pieces of debris are up close, it can look like an unidentified flying object. In reality, people are just seeing a common piece of space debris. In recent years, it seems that more and more people are talking about unidentified flying objects. Going back several years ago, it was a topic that wasn't talked about or featured in the mainstream media very much. However, in recent years, this has changed. People now more than ever are openly talking about this topic. A variety of different people have decided that now is the best time to come forward with their sighting. This includes professionals like pilots. One of the most interesting stories is that of Captain Thomas Mantell. Captain Thomas Mantell was an experienced pilot, boasting a flight history of 2,167 hours in the air. Many of these hours had been served during World War II where he fought to the Allies in the Battle of Normandy and was rewarded with the Distinguished Flying Cross and Air Medal for his heroism. 
In 1947, he returned to Louisville and joined the New Kentucky Air National Guard as a flight leader. However, less than a year into the new job, Mantell's career ended in tragedy when he died in pursuit of an unknown flying object. Oof. The object was seen by several of Mantell's colleagues. Base Commander Colonel Guy Hicks reported that it was very white, and around one-fourth the size of the full moon. While observers in Clinton County Army Field described it as having the appearance of a flaming red cone, trailing a gaseous green mist, with a speed greater than 500 miles per hour. It was also seen by the Kentucky State Police who contacted Captain Mantell, requesting him to investigate the object. What Alongside two colleagues, Mantell set off in pursuit of the large white object. When his colleagues informed him they were going to retreat and level their altitude to try and see the object more clearly, Mantell ignored them pursuing the object in a steep climb and at a high altitude. <sighs> Unfortunately, while at this altitude, Mantell blacked out from a lack of oxygen and he and his plane crashed at a farm south of Franklin on the Tennessee-Kentucky state line. Mantell's death was tragic, but also a monumental occasion in UFO history. Before this point, there had only been a few cases reporting unidentified flying objects, and most of these cases had been dismissed by the police as fans. Now, somebody explain that one to us, right? Everybody who's saying, you know, there's no possible way, well, this guy saw something, and he was willing to risk his life to figure out what it was. He pursued it. So you mean to tell me that everything we've thought was or something, there's an explanation for, what about this one? Now, I'm, I'm fine with you looking at me like I'm cuckoo or crazy or something like that. I'm cool. But what we're not going to do is criticize somebody who risked their life to figure out what this thing was. Nah. Nah. Call me, but respect him. Respect him. And then give us answers. What was that? Have we seen any more like it? Is it possible? Are y'all keeping it a secret? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. That's right. We want the truth. What the things? And most of these cases have been dismissed by the police as fans or the delusional sightings of insane men and women. However, Mantel was a highly respected- Did they just call them delusional? And most of these cases have been dismissed by the police as fans, or the delusional sightings of insane men and women. However- That's not right, man. That's not right. That dude risked his life, bro. And y'all are gonna call this type of stuff delusional? That's not right to me. No, ain't no way. If a mentor was a highly respected pilot, thank you. And the highly fact he laid down his life to determine what this object was resulted in an increased public concern about UFO phenomena. The official response from the Air Force line where Mantel worked was that the object he'd seen was actually Venus. However, this theory has been attacked by others who argue that on the date of Mantel's death, Venus was only 33 degrees above the horizon, and thus would not have been visible to Mantel also stating that it was an insult to Mantell, who would have definitely known the difference between a planet and a moving unidentified craft. An official investigation was later opened named Project Blueberg, that concluded that the object Mantell was chasing was a Skyhook balloon, and part of a top secret project that neither Mantell nor his colleagues would have known about. He's now I have said that too. I've said that before too. Some of the stuff that we can't explain is secret government operations that they don't want, to, want us to know about. So they throw us off, disregard this, throw out bogus statements about what it could have been, or just simply call us crazy or delusional for us thinking that it's something to throw us off, but never come out and say what it actually is. But you can't keep doing that, bro, especially when you got pilots out here flying around. You, you gotta let somebody know something. Skyhook balloons were being used by the Navy to measure radiation levels in the upper atmosphere. The Skyhook balloon finding has been largely accepted. 
However, there are still some skeptics. For example, eyewitness Glenn Mayus insists that Mantell was the victim of an attack, as he swears he saw Mantell's plane explode in mid-air as if the result of a bullet. His argument is supported by James Dewsdale, who states that the damage pattern of Mantell's plane was not consistent with an aircraft crashing at high speeds, but instead one that had barely flopped into the clearing, as if it was shot down. There's even some who say that when Mantel's body was found, it was riddled with strange holes. Whether you accept the official line that Mantel was chasing a Skyhope balloon, or believe he was the victim of a weapon, what Mantel was chasing that day remains a mystery. So that's basically then you're saying that this was that top secret, that they were willing to take him down. They were willing to shoot him down then let us know what they got going on. That's, that's the other alternative explanation here. So what do you make of these mysterious events? And what do you think this mysterious object is that can be seen at the International Space Station? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy, bro. This is the world we live in. It's either this or it's that. We don't know. It's no in between. They're not letting us know. Everything is such a secret or top secret. You know what I mean? And I get that type of stuff too. If it's for our defense against others out here and we want to keep it secret, cool. But man, you got to let somebody know. Somebody know. Something. Y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what you thought about this video. And uh, stick around and stay tuned, man. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.